wrote that can I read my own writing Good evening. <clears throat> Do we have any apologies for absence? Councillor Moore. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillors Birch, Moore and Wilson. Thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> Thank you. Agenda item two, to hear the roll call of members <coughs> and to receive declarations of interest under the Council's Code of Conduct. Councillor Julie Aviat. Councillor Jonathan Bird. <laughs> Councillor Bronwyn Brooks. <clears throat> Councillor Liz Burnett. Councillor George Carroll. Councillor Christine Cave. Councillor Janice Charles. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Millie Collins. Councillor Jeff Cox. Councillor Robert Crowley. Councillor Pamela Drake. Councillor Vince Driscoll. Councillor Stuart Edwards. Councillor Ben Gray. Councillor Owen Griffiths. Councillor Stephen Griffiths. Councillor Sally Hanks. 
Councillor Nick Hodges. Councillor Hunter Jarvie. Present, nothing Councillor Gwyn John. Councillor Ian Johnson. Councillor Gordon Kemp. Councillor Peter King. Councillor Kevin Marney. Councillor Catherine McCaffer. Councillor Neil Moore. Councillor Michael Morgan. Councillor Jane Norman. Councillor Rachel Nugent Finn. Councillor Andrew Parker. Councillor Bob Penrose. Councillor Sandra Perks. Councillor Andrew Robertson. Councillor Leighton Rowlands. Councillor Ruba Sivanyanam. Councillor John Thomas. Councillor Neil Thomas. Councillor Stefan William. Councillor Margaret Wilkinson. Councillor Eddie Williams. Councillor Margarita Wright. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item three, which is for approval, the Cardiff Capital Regional City Deal, the Joint Working Agreement Business Plan, referenced from Cabinet on the 19th of March 2018. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Members will be aware that this report was presented to Cabinet on the 19th of March with a reference onto Council for consideration. The reason why this report is coming here tonight is straightforward. The agreement of the City Deal five-year business plan is a matter that has not been delegated to the Cardiff, Cardiff Capital Region Cabinet, hence the need for 10 councils to agree. <coughs> this is an issue which has been considered by various partner councils over recent weeks. Merthyr was the first of the 10 councils to approve, followed by uh, Newport, who approved the plan uh, on Monday of this week, Cardiff Thursday of last week, Blaine Gwent Thursday of last week, and Monmouth also approved the plan last week. And I'm aware that others, including Torvine, RCT, Regend, and Caerphilly, are also considering the matter today. Although there is considerable detail in the body of the report, the only matter that requires a decision <coughs> is that of the business plan. Much of the detail within the report is included for context. So in terms of context, the report sets out the background to the city deal. It provides context by referring to the early work on the city deal, which led to the sign-in of the heads of terms by the 10 constituent councils in the spring of 2016, signed on behalf of this council by Council Neil Moore, the leader at the time. Members, as members will be aware, the joint working agreement was signed on the 1st of March 2017. Finally, in terms of context, this report is necessary as the JWA requires that the business plan be agreed by all councils. In other words, it is not devolve, a devolved matter to the regional cabinet. That takes me to the business plan itself, which is appended to the report in front of you. The first thing to say is that the plan is deliberately high level and visionary. There is some detail in the plan, but also flexibility. And there has to be flexibility because as a region, we must be fleet of foot to new and emergency challenge, uh, emerging challenges. It does not talk of site-specific projects, given that any project will have to be assessed against detailed assessment criteria in order to be considered for City Deal funding. Everyone will appreciate from the context that the City Deal Heads of Terms was compiled around thematic interventions, not site-specific projects. And this is the reason why site-specific projects have not been factored into the fi first <coughs> five-year business plan. The exception to this has been the investment decision taken to enable the City Deal Cabinet to invest in the compound semiconductor cluster in Newport, given the regional cabinet decision made to support that cluster. Pages eight and nine set out the aims, which are high level for the next five years, envisaged as part of the business plan. It clarifies that the first investment has already been made into the semiconductor cluster with other high-level investments including digital innovation, skills, metro and strategic sites 
as well as a housing fund to kickstart housing investment. Page 10 sets out the strategic regional objectives, which are as follows. Prosperity and opportunity, inclusion and equality, and identity, culture, community, and sustainability. These are detailed further on pages 12 and 13. Page 18 sets out spatial priorities <coughs> identified in the business plan, and page 19 identifies Barry, a strategic hub, and identifies the presence of the enterprise zones, including the airport and St. Athens. In terms of strategic objectives, the business plan follows the strategic objectives as set out in the heads of terms agreed on the 1st of March 2016. Page 20 deals with the skills agenda, and this is deliberately non-spatial, all cross-cutting in nature and policy-based. Page 22 relates to innovation, reference to investment around semiconductors and also public sector testbed, <coughs> given the region's reliance on public sector employment and also a focus on regional business support. Page 24 refers to the transport and connectivity agenda, referring to ongoing work on a regional transport strategy with mention of strategic opportunities around the airport, the Great Western Main Line, and also the ports, including Barry. Page 25 refers to Metro Plus and makes reference to the proposed investment in Cardiff Central, given the need to improve sustainable access into and out of the capital. Page 26 refers to other future initiatives, including access to the airport and strategic access to the M4 in the context of the airport. Page 27 refers to the digital strand, <coughs> referencing fibre connectivity, both regionally and internationally. And page 28 refers to the housing and regeneration objective, including regional housing fund. And this also includes reference to the visitor economy. And page 33 mentions Barry Island. The plan also refers to other potential funding opportunities and the review process to be undertaken by the regional cabinet. So in conclusion, the matter for this council is simply acceptance and agreement of the business plan, which I hope we will get tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Do we have any questions? Vincent Driscoll. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thanks for that, Leader. Um, just a couple of questions. Uh, firstly, obviously, with a city deal, infrastructure is very high on the agenda. And can you um, reassure the, the Chamber and the people of Dinis Powys and the Wider Vale that the Dinis Powys bypass would be one of your bids? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Councillor Driscoll. As with Junction 34, <coughs> members will be aware that we are currently carrying out well tag appraisals for the Dennis Powers Bypass. Our report is going to the next Cabinet meeting uh, regarding extending the scope of the Dennis Powers study at the request of the Dennis Powers Community Council. I must say at this point that City Deal is unlikely to fund this project in full, but if the preferred option for the well tag process is a bypass, there may well be a role for City Deal in enabling the scheme with additional Welsh Government funding. Okay. Councillor Neil Moore. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Can I formally second the Leader's proposal? As someone who was heavily involved in setting up the City Deal originally, um, this is the right way forward. Um, this is, as, as John said, the skeleton bones of the plan, the business plan, um, and as we progress with the business plan, schemes will come forward. They obviously have to be uh, audited and assigned uh, to, to the various committees in order to look at it, and then the, the, the city cabinet can look at it. I have absolutely no uh, doubt that this is important for this council, for this region, and I am happy to second the, the motion. Thank you, Councillor Moore. <laughs> Councillor Ian Johnson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you to the Leader for uh, his introduction. Thank you also for the briefing that you gave to group leaders um, a few weeks ago, which was very helpful in uh, setting the context for, um, for the work that we're um, discussing tonight. Um, councillors who uh, weren't here before last May, um, well, councillors who were here before last May will know that um, Plaid Cymru last year voted against the, the city deal um, when it came to us here for, for two specific reasons. Uh, the first was that it had no democratic mandate. Um, because it was in front of a council which had three months left to run 
and it had uh, and it's something therefore signing up uh, for something that was with 25 years um, beyond the political life of, uh, of most people who were in the chamber at that time um, felt wrong it felt wrong to us to support something that would uh, when we're going to the public a few months later to ask for their uh, for their position um, so it would have been an opportunity not to have done it before May but have done asked for it at that May time the second reason and this is perhaps more um, something which which you know, still concerns me is really about the amount of money that uh, is involved and, and how effective it will be. It's about the gap between the, uh, the rhetoric of the transformational um, city deal that's being suggested to us and the amount of money that's actually there. Because um, what we're talking about here in the city deal is 1.229 um, billion over the period. Um, 734 million of that is already attached to the metro. Um, and then another 495 million is the wider investment fund, which is the part of the business plan that we are um, here to, um, to approve or, or not um, tonight. That 495 million pounds um, is not a great deal of money because if you think about the context of our own annual budget, which is uh, a turnover of 350 million, then except expecting 495 million across 10 local authorities in a quarter of a century to be a game changer is, I think, um, going a little bit too far. That's not to s disagree with the concept, the work, and what's, you know, the w excellent work that is going on, but it is to say that rather like uh, the Objective 1 funding that Wales had for a number of years um, from Europe, to suggest that this actually solves all of our problems uh, is, I think, a little bit mistaken. So I think it's important that we, uh, you know, we perhaps rein in some of the, um, the, you know, the spin and the rhetoric that surrounds what's actually a fairly small amount of long-term money. You compare that to the amount of money that's circulating amongst those 10 local authorities, you compare that to the Welsh Government budget, and £495 million is not actually that substantial. I say that, um, although we will be supporting um, this tonight, because uh, what I do think is good is that of the, uh, of the 11 um, sites named uh, in the spatial plan there, um, there are 11 sites, 10 local authorities, and two of those in the Vale of Glamorgan. So I think this hopefully um, is an indicator that we will be getting uh, something uh, very special out of this, and I'm sure that's what the leader and the chief executive will be trying to do as we go forward. Um, I'm not sure quite how this is going to work. This is a very high-level document, perhaps uh, necessarily so at this stage, but the devil will be in the detail, and the devil will be in the implementation. And when we see these things happening and coming through, they go through the, the three stages of the outline, business case, etc., then I think we'll be very interested to see what happens. And I would, of course, welcome an undertaking because the, these things will not be coming back necessarily to full council here, although I'm sure they'll be reported to Cabinet and to Corporate Resources and Performance. I would like an undertaking from the lead that he will be uh, ensuring cross-party consensus on anything that does go forward from this council um, towards the, the Cabinet uh, whenever that's possible, so keeping us all in the loop and making sure that um, we are uh, happy. I'm, I'm aware that Bridge End, I think, have passed it this afternoon, and whether my colleagues in, uh, in Bridge End and the Plaid Cymru group there voted against it because uh, it wasn't able to secure areas of funding, for example, north of the M4 for the Valleys communities. So those things are you know, strong concerns that people have that they will, this cake will not be um, as good as it could be, will not be as effective as it could be. £495 million pounds is not an awful lot of money. It's good to pump prime um, you know, these things, but if you're talking about a leverage with the private sector that's actually an eight to one ratio, mm. then you have to wonder what need the public sector taxpayers' money going into this is actually doing when the private sector could be doing it without us putting that money in. So there are an awful lot of concerns that I, I have about this going forward. I'm putting them to one side for the moment because the, state, the position this is in uh, is, is very much, I think, a wait and see what effect, what impact this has. I am a little concerned about the uh, the quality assessment that we have here um, and a whole load of areas which just say as above um, it seems to me very much that the because of the nature of the city deal and how it's been set up in the context of growth or, or, or orthodox economic growth um, targets I, I do wonder how that's really going to fit in with the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act and I would welcome there's, there's, seconds, reference, there, there's reference within the uh, reports to working alongside the uh, Future Generations Commissioner's Office, and I think that would be helpful to have a bit more information, if not um, at this meeting now, then in future, as to how that relationship is going to develop. Because if the targets for the Gateway Review, etc., are going to be related to orthodox economic growth indicators, then we maybe need to see how that actually fits in along that 
alongside that agenda from the Welsh Government. So, uh, as I say, um, the Plaid Cymru Group will be supporting this tonight, um, but we have lots of concerns, lots of questions. And uh, additionally, with regard to the Metro, which is not part of this debate tonight, um, we were interested in how that will actually affect the payload for Morgan and also, of course, the Dinners Palace bypass. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Leader? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councillor Johnson. And uh, can I thank uh, Councillor Moore for seconding uh, the motion and uh, pay tribute to the work that he did in actually bringing uh, the city deal forward and getting the veil signed up to it uh, last year. Um, as Councillor Johnson said, the Plaid Cymru group voted against it last year. I'm pleased to say that the uh, Conservative group voted for it. Um, can't quite see the uh, thinking behind the fact that it was so close to the election and that it was only three months left to run because <coughs> say, there's a 25-year plan. There's only uh, four years left to run of the administration now, but we're voting for it. But uh, So I think it, it's excellent. I'm really pleased that you are um, on board tonight and going to, uh, to, to vote with us uh, to pass this. Um, as you said, the amount of money isn't that significant, 495 million in the wider investment fund. But I must say that most of this money is going to be in invested as investments, which will be repaid. There will be very few grants, as far as I can see, given out. There is a chance of some grants on the, for some of the uh, enabling housing schemes, but they will be a last resort. It will be for investment, for the money to come back into the pot and to be reinvested. Um, and that the amount that we are actually putting forward, which is the, the sem just over 17 million, is um, even less significant than the 495 million. And hopefully we should see a really good return on that for the Vale of Glamorgan. Uh, we're lucky enough to have a meeting at the semiconductor cluster this week. And uh, it was stressed there that the decision to invest in the semiconductor <coughs> Cluster has already secured 500 <coughs> jobs, which would have lost, been lost there if we hadn't, if City Deal hadn't invested. And that's, uh, you know, listening to them, it's really they're really enthusiastic, and it looks as if it's going to be something really good going forward. And those jobs there are available to people in the Vale. It's um, the idea of Metro is to link up the uh, the areas within the, the South Wales area so that jobs <coughs> with anywhere within the region are available to, to people from anywhere else within the region. <coughs> so it's not all about what we can get for the Vale. It will be nice to think that we do get something directly, some direct involvement in the Vale, but it's not all about what we get in the Vale. It's about what the, the region gets and, and how, how we in the Vale can benefit from the region uh, benefiting from City Deal. Um, I can show you that we'll be bringing regular reports back to the Vale of Glamorgan Council on the progress of City Deal, as you say, through the scrutiny committee, and um, also quite happy to uh, to brief the leaders on a reasonably regularly basi regular basis when there is something to uh, to discuss. Um, the point you made about uh, you know do we really need to be putting this money in because uh, it's the leverage is so great and how much we're trying to lever in from the private sector, but I think what it does show is a commitment from local government for these sort of schemes to, uh, to go ahead and be successful. Um, your last point about the Future Generations Commission, and I know she's keeping an eye on us, and uh, I'm sure we will come back, back to you with uh, future reports on uh, how the city deal investments fit in with the uh, Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. So thank you very much. Thank you, Leader. Councillor Gwyn John. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, we're delighted, Landwood First Group, to support the joint working agreement recommendation tonight. Um, you have to be part of it to benefit, and it's important that the Vale of Glamorgan is a, plays a big part in this. And obviously, um, there are everybody's going to be fighting their corner, wanting spending in their areas. Of course they are. But at the same time, we've got the leader and the managing director representing the Vale of Glamorgan, and they'll be fighting our corner. I was fully supportive of the coalition, in the coalition group, of when uh, Neil was uh, uh, working for the city deal and first signing up for it, and quite honestly, nothing has changed. We're fully supportive, and we need to move forward as a unit. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor John. Councillor Neil Moore. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, actually, can I congratulate John, because he's virtually just said everything I've written down here. Uh, <laughs> it, it, well, no, it, the, the point is that it, it, it was never meant to be a, an, an issue to solve all of our problems, as, as, was, as was suggested. It's, um, 
It's a pump prime, and it is a pump prime, and it's been successful. And I'm glad you've mentioned the semiconductors, John, because 500 jobs is 500 jobs, no matter where they come from. They're all within our region. And more to the, more to the point, we took that decision knowing that we were owning the building where it was going to take place and that that investment was going to come back to us <laughs> with the option for them buying it off us afterwards. So it was actually pump priming, it was investment, it was actually going forward, it was producing a, 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 a worldwide um, a product using very high skills and using the skills of the people who live here uh, in, in the region. Um, and I, 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 I wish, and it's something I said at the time, I wish people would get away from the fact that you have to look for plans and for, for investment or, or particular uh, buildings of job opportunities within your own area. If it comes, yes. And, we, and, and John, you're right. We argued quite strongly that we've got the Port of Barry, we've got the, the airport, and we've got the enterprise zones. And that's our pump prime in areas as far as we're concerned. Now, if we didn't have them, it wouldn't matter because what we hope is that investment will come forward so people who live here will get jobs and they will be able to buy houses and they will be able to uh, invest in our communities. So th this is the whole point of it. It wasn't a case of, look what we are going to get out of it. It's a case of, look what we're all going to get out of it and how it's going to uh, improve the economy of the southeast region. Um, John, you said most of it, so well done. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Councillor Burnett. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Over the last week or so, we've had even more talk of, about local government reorganisation. Um, this is probably the third iteration. And while all those various versions have been going on, the 10 local authorities in South East Wales have quietly carried on collaborating in ever larger initiatives, this being the largest. But for this to work, it's not about what we get or what they get. As a, as a, a, a local authority, we all know about the arguments we get between what Barry gets, what Penarth gets, what Cowbridge gets and what Sandwich Major gets. If you magnif magnify that up to 10 local authorities, this will never work. I'm hugely ple pleased to have played a part, and I'm hugely pleased to see that many of the things that we argued for, the themes and the priorities, are still included in this business plan going forward. But I'll leave you with a quote that I came across today and just reread it. It said, by the strength of our common endeavour, we achieve more than we achieve alone. So as to create for each of us the means to realise our true potential and for all of us as a community in which power and wealth and opportunity are in the hands of the many, not the few. That will be very relevant to the people sitting around me. But if anybody else would like a membership card, it's very <laughs> welcome. Thank you, Councillor Burnett. Lisa, would you like to sum up? Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you to everybody who's contributed tonight. Um, the, Neil did mention, and I'd already mentioned, the 500 jobs in the semiconductor cluster. And it is important to note that those jobs are uh, double the average salary of jobs in the area. They're, you know, they're good jobs, they're not <coughs> just any jobs, and uh, well, well worth having. Um, I'd like to thank Liz for br bringing up the subject of um, local government reorganisation. And I think. The fact that the 10 councils uh, in the South East Wales area are working together so well on City Deal is a really good argument against local government reorganisation, mandatory reorganisation. Um, when it suits us, we've always said, and the previous administrators have always said, they're willing to collaborate and we'll do everything we can to work together to make things better for the uh, residents and citizens. But we don't want mandatory local government reorganisation, don't see the the need for it, don't see the point of it, don't see the benefits of it. But this sort of thing, this uh, working together, really does benefit everybody. Um, I've got nothing, nothing else really to add. Thank uh, Gwyn for his comments. Thank everybody for their, uh, their contribution. 
Um, I hope that we'll have a unanimous uh, vote tonight. The important thing is that we get it through, but uh, it would be nice to get a unanimous vote um, to show that this council is firmly behind um, the city deal. I think most, most of the other councils have um, had unanimous votes, the ones that have gone up until now. I hadn't heard about uh, the Bridge End uh, vote until uh, it was mentioned tonight. But uh, So with that, um, I th think we can put it to the vote and I hope we get a unanimous support. Thank you, Leader. All those in favour of the recommendation, can we have a show of hands, please? That's unanimous. That's passed. Thank you all very much. And before you leave, can I wish you all a very happy Easter and a blessed year. Thank you.